glycan age. So we're using glycans to measure age. So how do you use that to determine your age? And um, so what are you actually measuring and, and kind of how predictable is it? So glycan age is based on glycans attached to immunoglobulin G. And these structures are either promoting inflammation or suppressing inflammation. So these are the molecules which we actually measure. So when we measure glycan age, we take a drop of blood, remove immunoglobulins, fish out immunoglobulins, cut off the glycans, and measure each of the structures. And based on analysis of tens of thousands of people, we know how an average person changes through time. So we can say this is an average 40, 50, 60 year old men or women, men and women are very different here. And then based on a set of standards which the glycan age company developed, you can actually pinpoint an individual to an average person. So say your glycans look like an average 42 year old. And then there is a chronological age, which can be either 20 or 50 or whatever. And then you can look at the difference between chronological and, and the glycan age. And um, part of it is genetic. Approximately 40% is defined by your genes. So people with a different ethnicity, people living, living in different regions of the world, will be different, but part of it is environment. And as I mentioned earlier, the best way to use your glycan age is not just have a number and put it on a wall and say, you know, I'm 25, but look at the change with time. And for example, here we, this is how we discover that the glycans are also very good predictors of perimenopause, because we had a woman in their early 40s who would be 10, 20 years younger than the chronological age. And then within a couple of months or a year, they would age for a decade, two decades, three decades. So you had, for example, you have a 45-year-old lady, her glycan age was 23, 24, immediately she's 60. And she freaks out, of course, everybody would freak out mm -hmm. because the question is why this was happening. And when the menopause is a source, then the glycans change first. So the cycle is still regular. Women don't know they have a, they're entering the perimenopause period, but the glycans are changing already. Or um, if people start to gain weight, eat a little bit too much, glycans can go up. Uh, stress is a very important factor. So usually we see uh, busy executives to turn out really bad. And especially those who think that they can solve all the problems by sweating them out in a gym. So busy executive doing hard exercise usually turns out the worst because exercise is also pro-inflammatory. You have to combine the optimal exercise with relaxation. And if you just push it, push it, push it harder. And usually, you know, people who push everything else, they also push themselves for, for when they exercise. And we actually learned that many people are overtrained. So overtraining could be as damaging as uh, not being active at all. And when you think about it, it's logical because, you know, for professional athletes, we would say they're old in their 30s. You know, football players in their 30s, fifth or 36th year, they're old. They can't play for long anymore. And while well, they're actually young, somebody who is 30 years is young, but their body has been way consumed. They've been um, investing so much in physical activity that there is a wear and tear everywhere. And then you combine it with uh, being a busy executive and making all the decisions and stress and not sleeping it ends up not good. And this is, actually, this was one of our first, um, well, it's not a mistake, but it's a, it's a lesson we learned. So we thought that the glycan age would be best combined with the gyms. So that the gyms would use the glycan age to show that they're actually making people healthier. Unfortunately, majority of gyms does not. 
there are some, we have some uh, personal trainers who are really successful in making people younger. But for example, we had a large project with over thousand middle-aged people exercising and majority of them actually got older in six months because they were overtrained. So you cannot just take somebody who was not active before and then just push them to train too much. So I think it's important to have this uh, tool to measure what is going on and then say, you know, maybe high intensity interval training would be a better solution than running for an hour on a treadmill. So things have to be individualized, things have to be optimized, personalized, and then we can get personal output. And this is how the glycan age is actually being used by, by many clinics now, because I think there are over 300 clinics which are selling glycan age today. And this is to evaluate individual patient or client. I don't like to call them patient because they're not ill. No, they're, they're clients. So you look what is going on and then you optimize your therapy. And we can really see that people become 10, 20 years younger after the right kind of intervention. And a little diverse, but the, the kind of exercise depends a lot on the person, just like the diet. Is that true? Or, or, or could you generalize the exercise in any way? Uh, I don't know enough about okay. it to okay. have an educated opinion, but I would guess we know that people are genetically different. We have a different energy metabolism. We have different uh, composition of our muscles. Some muscles are better for endurance. The other ones are better for exposure strength. And I would guess these things have to be optimized. And uh, the, they are not optimized at the moment because there are no tools how to evaluate effect. The only thing how we are currently optimizing physical activity is by measuring ability to do the same physical activity you are optimizing. So, no, if you're doing push-ups, you measure how many push-ups you can do. But we don't see the long-term effects. And I think this test eventually will help. Not only this, maybe other tests will help make an educated decision. But at the moment, um, there are no tools. So it's very hard to uh, optimize physical activity. Okay, kind of sticking in this area for a second. So uh, how, how malleable is glycan age? It seems to be that you can actually, you can impact it quite a lot. Uh, how often should you get tested? I mean, can you make one month? Can you make changes? One month only if there's a very targeted uh, pharmacotherapy. So some kind of uh, chemicals which will really affect the process. If we are talking about the lifestyle interventions, only in a low color diet, we see something after two months. Mm -hmm. Usually we see effects after three to six months because IgG is a very long-term measure. It, it, it has a half-life of a couple of weeks. So it takes you know, at least four to six weeks before it even becomes visible what is produced today. And if I start doing something, it also takes a couple of weeks to have effect on my body. So before, so usually I do myself every two months, mm -hmm. but I, I don't have to pay for the test. No, it's my lab. So for clients, we usually do not recommend more than every three months because changes are minimal. Mm -hmm. So for myself, usually if I change for a year, that's, uh, that's uh, nearly a surprise every two months. But uh, on some interventions like hormones, they can do much faster. But then again, no, you don't need this every few months. I think three months would be kind of a minimal. Re well, actually, we are selling the test, so they can do it every one month if they want. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm joking. Right. Uh, uh, yeah.